Hi, it's Carl, Ranger Commander. Thanks for coming back. Today we're going to be talking about the, the trench fire. The trench fire is a good fire when you have some breeze. I don't recommend it for, uh, for high winds, but if, you've got, if it's a little breezy, it, it's a good fire. So stay with me and I'm going to show you how this is done. Thanks for coming back. Okay, well, now that we've uh, shown you how to do the, the hunter's fire, it's time to start thinking about the trench fire. Now the trench fire, we're going to need a tool. We're going to need a shovel. So let's talk shovels. Uh, shown here are several different types of shovels. We have the army shovel. We have the towel. We have the blacksmith shovel. Blacksmith meaning I made it. I'm a blacksmith. The commercial shovel and the stick. So which do you think we should use? Well, you know, you may not have any of those available. You may have to use the stick. So how do you use the stick? Well, let me show you. Earlier, I mentioned batoning. Now, again, batoning is only for a good sturdy knife. You're not going to use a cheap knife or a, cheap, or a knife with a uh, rat tail tang. A rat tail tang is where it goes just a little bitty thing. You might see a little nub on the end where it's been uh, peened over or where there's a, um, a pommel or something that's been screwed onto it. Okay, Those are not meant for this kind of use or abuse. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and another piece of wood want to do this in a way because we don't want our hand underneath this. There we go. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to drive my knife through with that. So let's go to the other end. Okay. Yeah, I didn't choose a great stick to do this with, did I? All right. Notice I'm doing it away from me. Okay. All right. Well, I have my shovel. <laughs> you're like, you're crazy! I'm not going to do that. Well, actually, if you're a youth, you probably shouldn't do that. You should probably use a shovel. I'm just demonstrating an option. <laughs> because sometimes you don't have that. All right, let's take apart the hunter's fire, or the, yeah, the hunter's fire. We need a trench. All right, so, I mean, it's called a trench fire. Alright, so we got a gentle slope coming down here to the area where the fire pit is going to be. So that's where we would build our fire. It's right in here. 
and then build our teepee. <coughs> Little pieces of stick with Y is are great for that. Then we'll build our teepee here, okay? Once we start our fire, then we are going to need something to lay across here. Now we could use a couple tent pegs. The other thing we could do is you could use a couple pieces of wood to set your cooking utensils down on top of. Yes, they're going to burn. So add them to the fire after you're finished cooking. But there you have it. There's your trench fire. Let's cover this up. Remember, leave it as good or better than you found it. You don't dig a trench fire and leave it for somebody to trip in. Yes, tamp it down some too. then where it's not tamping the best. I got my wood. It's all right. Get that out of the way. You know, your center place, it's not going to tamp in as well, so you want to go ahead and pile it up a little higher and then tamp it down. There. No sign of a trench fire to what we want. Thank you again, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Well, I hope you enjoyed what I just showed you. And, uh, you know, remember everything that I told you. Don't forget to, like I've said, make sure you have everything ready to put your fire out and to keep your fire going before you start it. Okay? Never leave a fire unattended. All right? Well, let's have some adventures in camping, and I'll see you next time.